Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Gareth, Key Account Manager here at Bixio Gambling Compliance, based in London, and I'm here today with Tom Simcock, who's the Senior Regulatory Analyst at Bixio. Uh, first, an introduction for anybody who isn't aware. Uh, Vixio is a regulatory technology company serving both the gambling and payments industries. We are the trusted source of independent, authoritative and actionable regulatory intelligence. For compliance professionals, regulatory and strategy professionals working in highly regulated industries such as gambling and payments. We deliver comprehensive, time sensitive information and actionable intelligence on payments and gambling covering more than 180 jurisdictions around the globe. This week, running 18th to 24th of November, uh, is Safe for Gambling Week, a cross-industry initiative in the UK and Ireland. In today's webinar, we wanted to talk through Vixio's recent player protection outlook, exploring some of the themes within the outlook uh, and how these are likely to evolve into 2025. Then, after discussing the player protection outlook, we'll quickly log into the Vixio platform to share where some of our clients can access player protection measures and how these compare across different continents. Throughout this, Tom and I will have some conversations about the differing measures around the world and how we see these trending into 2025. Finally, we'll open up the chat box uh, in order to take any audience questions. Uh, we'll be able to, to take those at the end of the webinar. Uh, so as I mentioned a moment, a moment ago, this is Safe for Gambling Week within the UK uh, and Ireland. Uh, and we often refer to player safety or responsible gambling or player protection uh, in, in, in many ways. I just want to ask Tom, are we talking about the, the same things here? Are the phrases intertwined and, and what do you understand player protection to be and, and safer gambling to mean? Yeah, I think it's important initially just to say that, you know, responsible gambling, safer gambling, player protection, player safety, gambling harm minimization, ultimately they're all the same thing that you know they may be called different things but essentially that they're, they're the same thing and a definition um for me of um player protection that um that, that that is that is accurate is trying to provide safe socially responsible and supportive gambling environments in which people can enjoy gambling um as a form of entertainment and any potential for harm is minimized. Um, and what I'd also say now we're at the end of 2024, I think you can see across um, parts of the gambling industry that the onus for um, player protection has shifted or is certainly shifting from how it used to be with players expected to gamble responsibly using safer gambling tools that operators provided to now the onus being much more on the operators to um, protect the player more. Yeah, well put Tom. And I think I would agree with, with that shift in, in onus, especially in the last couple of years. Uh, so as we mentioned, we've recently published a player protection outlook, which is available on site to Vixio clients. Uh, and as well as, uh, as well as those people who have have registered for this webinar, we will be making that report, the full report available for, for you to download. Could you tell us why the topic of player protection remains such a key part of our industry discussion? Uh, and why is it critical that, that safer gambling continues to receive adequate investment and, and innovation? Yeah, sure. And I think what I'll do to answer that question is just read from the opening of the, um, of the Outlook uh, report. So there's a growing and continuous pressure from regulators, consumers and society to address, to address the increasingly well-known um, gambling-related societal harms. Um, in turn, player protection is becoming more intertwined with regulatory compliance, sustainability and technological developments, such as AI-powered player behaviour monitoring tools. Um, in the past few years in the gambling industry, um, there's been a shift from acknowledging and at times debating the need for player protection measures to pushing for them in order to stave off future restrictive measures in their markets um, or to stave off an enforcement backlash. Cheers. And, and, it, and is it fair to say that kind of despite the, the different approaches and maybe depending on the maturity of different markets that uh, 
these issues are very much universal. Uh, how, how have you and your team tried to approach that and address it in the outlook? Yeah, so I think whilst um, player protection um, is often at different stages or levels across jurisdictions, in regulated gambling markets, it's nearly always a significant issue. So therefore, there is a lot of um, universal um, trends, as you say, and we've tried to um, select um, points or trends from a variety of different markets to reflect that. Great. Well, let's begin to talk about some of those themes that are addressed in the outlook then. Uh, one area, and, and it's a kind of an area of innovation that is is almost everywhere at the moment and, and everywhere you look, and that's AI. Mm -hmm. uh, so artificial intelligence or maybe machine learning, depending on how you, how you describe it. Uh, how is AI being used to support safer gambling and, and encourage player protection? Yeah, so firstly, I think we already touched on slightly how AI is being used as um, a tool to help um, monitor player behavior in terms of player protection. And I think a lot of people will be aware of that use already. However, that's definitely not the only um, way that AI can be used to um, help improve player protection. Um, there's the belief in the industry that AI will soon be used to support gambling, um, safer gambling via chat assistance through the use of large language models. Now, large language models, models are a type of AI program that can generate and understand natural language. Um, the challenge will be in how customers react to having what may be difficult conversations about their gambling habits with a computer. Um, the players may still prefer to talk to a, a human, um, but the anticipated um, increased use of LLMs suggests that at least in the use, um, that the use of AI and safer gambling will, will go a lot further than simply monitoring player behavior. Um, and another way that we think um, AI will be used in player protection is um, to reduce the technological barrier for people from other industries wanting to join the gambling industry. Um, and this should enhance player protection because the industry will be able to employ the people with the necessary specialist skills um, and they'll just be more readily available. What would you mean by employing more people with the skills? What do you mean by that? Yeah, um, what I would say is that, um, for example, you may um, need to employ people with um, specialist training in mental health or addiction and possibly a lack of knowledge about the gambling industry or specific parts of the gambling industry um, could sort of prevent those people um, joining the industry, but AI may be able to fill that gap and um, and make it easier for, for those kind of people to join the industry. Got you. So remo removing a barrier to entry for, for those for those people. Exactly, yeah. Got you. I, I think the point you make there about the, the the option to speak to a human still remains vital despite the um, despite the, the developments in that area. Um, one thing we, we recently saw was a was a high court ruling in the UK uh, which ruled in favour of of Betfair uh, and their duty of care towards a VIP customer. Um, as I say, that the High Court ruled in in favour of, of Betfair in this case. But do you think that the requirements on the operator to provide specific duty of care will continue to gain gain traction in 2025? How do you see that going? Yeah. So with the the Betfair case, um, the complaint against them carried an implied assertion that Betfair had breached the terms of its gambling license, as it owed the complainant the duty of care to prevent large scale gambling losses. Um, and as you said, although um, the court ruled in favour of Betfair and dismissed the case, um, I think it's definitely a, an example of how imposing um, duty of care obligations on gambling operators could leave them more open to legal actions, mainly from players, um, especially under a legal system like the UK's. Um, moving on to the, what you were asking about duty of care requirements um, being brought in, um, 
several European governments and regulators have either recently introduced or in the in the process of adding duty of care requirements. Um, and if we start with Belgium, August saw the government propose amendments to the gaming law, adding an active duty of care for gambling operators. Um, the draft uh, amendments require gambling operators to actively inform their players on the risks of gambling and to systematically keep the player informed about their own gambling behaviour. Um, and if the amendments are passed in their existing form, providers will be expected to assist the player in moderating their gambling behaviour by referring them to gambling assistance agencies, excluding them from games and, adv and advising the player to register in the excluded person's information system. Um, gambling providers will also be required to set out in their prevention policy how they will implement their duty of care in a similar fashion to what is now required in Sweden. Um, but it's not just Belgium um, in Europe where duty of care requirements are being uh, introduced. Um, a new unit is also being established at the Netherlands Gambling Authority to monitor how gambling um, operators fulfil their duty of care and to issue fines to those who do not meet the regulator's standards. Um, meeting duty of care standards in the Netherlands now includes conducting affordability checks um, following a new responsible gambling policy that was released by the regulator in June 2024. So I think what we've seen um, with um, the introduction of duty of care requirements that the responsibilities and, and, and the onus borne by licensed operators um, is increasing and more jurisdictions should be expected to follow suit in a similar way. Got it. Um, just touching on a, co a couple of the um, couple of the markets which we've mentioned there in particular then, um, the UK and the Netherlands. In the UK, we've seen a trial in place based upon a, a single customer view. Um, and that's been something which has, again, been born out of the affordability checks and the intention to kind of understand the mm -hmm. affordability of a customer. Um, of the measures around player protection, it's perhaps the most contentious and mm -hmm. may be seen as um, invasive by some, and that's, that's an argument that's been put forward. What can you tell us about the, the UK and that single customer view? And then also, I know that you mentioned the Netherlands. What are the Netherlands doing for for affordability? Yeah, so if I, if I talk uh, mainly about the, uh, the UK and the single customer view trial, um, the Gambling Commission believes that looking at a person's gambling activities across operators could help identify and prevent potential gambling harms in those who hold accounts with more than one gambling um, company. Um, according to the Commission, online gamblers generally hold an average of three accounts and obviously, you know, that can often be a lot more than that. Um, and that's often the case with younger gamblers. They, they tend to hold, you know, um, significantly more than, than three accounts. Um, and the evidence that the um, UK Gambling Commission has found is that if you take part in multiple gambling activities, there's a greater chance of um, you suffering gambling related harm. Um, Plata, Entain, Bet365 and William Hill all joined the scheme in April 2023 uh, with Broadway Gaming and Betway also joining in August 2024. However, if participation in the scheme doesn't increase, this could result in it becoming a requirement for operators to join um, as GAM Protect wants the scheme to be reflective of the diverse UK industry and its operators. Um, so. Part of the single customer view's purpose um, would, de would definitely seem to be to help um, better determine the affordability of a player's um, gambling. And what about for what about for the Netherlands? I know they've been quite aggressive in their approach to to affordability checks. Yeah. So um, if we if we talk about the Netherlands now, they've certainly they've brought in a. 700 euro threshold as uh, the level of gambling um, spending in which new new affordability checks will kick in. Um, so they've certainly been quite 
um, forward thinking in terms of um, in terms of that. Um, just talking more about affordability in general, um, there's good reason to believe that requiring operators to know that their customers can afford their gambling is going to become commonplace the world over. Um, while the UK arguably dragged the trend into the limelight, affordability is yet to become a reality there. Um, a light touch version without full insight into customers' bank accounts is now a licensed condition. Um, but more intensive and controversial checks are still in um, a pilot phase. Um, and as you talked about, this has been extremely controversial, particularly with the horse racing industry, um, which has led a, a sustained and ongoing uh, campaign to defeat it. Um, the project has even crossed moral boundaries for some politicians who see it as regulatory overreach and um, that it could be a potential invasion of, of privacy. Um, and I'd also like to touch on the um, United States. Um, there have been rumblings of interest from US regulators about how affordability in the UK pans out. Um, although nothing, although there's nothing yet to suggest any plans are in the works, um, the Safe Bet Act, which has been proposed, uh, would introduce, an, introduce a version of affordability on a national level if it was ever passed. Um, so under this act, 30% of a player's monthly income would be the maximum amount that could be used for online sports betting under proposed affordability checks. Um, and the Safe Bet Act is expected to be the first salvo in a ramp up of pressure to impose player protection in the US. I guess those those figures that you've you've mentioned there, I mean, the, the US with potentially 30% and mm -hmm. then the, Nether the Netherlands with um, with kind of this 700 euros. Benchmark. Yeah. What, what's your kind of thoughts on on those? And, and I guess with the US, what do you think the the likelihood is of that of that potentially passing? Yeah. So I think the first thing to say is for me, it seems very difficult to be able to come up with a metric or a, a, a figure for um, affordability because it just seems like it can vary so much from person to person um so i think that other regulators will appreciate the fact that the netherlands has at least tried to do this with their 700 euro figure and in the same way you know it's interesting that that the safe bet act um has decided that 30 percent of a of a monthly income is is the most that should be sent should be spent on sports betting um but like I said, I think it's it's a very difficult um, thing to come up with a, with a with a with a figure. Um, in terms of whether the Safe Bet Act will pass, um, that's probably something I'd have to discuss in more detail with my US colleagues. Um, but I think what I would say is I think it's it's significant that it's been proposed at all. It just sort of shows that the, the direction of travel um, on player protection. I think. Yeah, that's that's fair, and I think for kind of any updates on that, people can people can continue to track and, and monitor developments on on Vixio. Uh, in terms of the the final major theme that we touch upon in the player protection outlook, then, um, and it's certainly something that's by no means new, and it's it's no doubt not going to be going away either. Uh, is the advertising kind of mm -hmm. the advertising and whether players are protected by gambling advertising? Um, what in particular did you want to highlight from the from the outlook, and, and maybe what what laws are, are potentially changing, what regulation is is coming? Sure. So, I mean, as you talked about um, gambling advertising, and you know, restrictions on it are not something new, but certainly we picked out in the outlook a few um, jurisdictions where there have been developments within gambling advertising. Um, and if we start in the UK, uh, again, there's a new social responsibility code, um, 5.112, and this is effective from the 1st of May 2025, and it will require licensees to provide customers with options to opt in to direct marketing on a per product and per channel basis. Um, also, if we talk about Australia, I think uh, operators are preparing themselves for more gambling advertising restrictions 
coming in in 2025. Although I think they are relieved that the idea of prohibiting all gambling advertising in um, in Australia seems to have been um, seems to have been um, shelved by the government. Um, in Argentina, um, they're currently debating um, a number of proposed bills regarding um, gambling advertising um, and trying to stop young people from gambling. Um, and while many of the bills may not pass individually, uh, the momentum is likely to provoke regulatory change. Um, and if we just go back to Europe uh, again, in Croatia, uh, a proposal for amendments to the law um, on games of chance, which is the Croatian Gambling Act, um, includes the limitation of gambling advertising and this, um, this law to amend the uh, the Gambling Act is currently at the, the parliamentary stage in, in Croatia. And just finally, we, we already touched on the Safe Bet Act. Um, and as part of that, it would require state regulatory regimes to align with new minimal federal standards in advertising. That's if the, the Safe Bet, Bet Act does pass, obviously. Got you. Thank you, Tom. Um, very insightful to, to hear about the, the developments around the world and, and where you see it going in, into 2025. Uh, I mentioned at the start of the, the webinar today um, that we would be that our, our guests would be able to find the, the player protection outlook on site if they have a Vixio account. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we'll be making it available to people who have signed up for the webinar today. Uh, so I'll just move to my screen and I'll show our guests where they can find the report when they're logged in, uh, as well as highlight some of the specific in-focus pages and, and details that are available specifically for RG and player protection uh, for updates in the space. Uh, so let me just share my screen now so people are able to know where to find that quickly. So from the Vixio homepage, one thing you will see across the top here is our library. Within the in-focus tab, which I'm hovering across now, there is an option to head to Responsible Gambling, the second one down. When clicked on that, you'll see the page here within the Responsible Gambling zone on site. You'll be able to take a look at the regulatory overviews. We have those now for Europe, North America, Latin America, and they act as a way of comparing, contrasting, and using a gap analysis on the, on the, the options. You'll also see Further down, you have regulatory updates, so any regulatory updates which mention responsible gambling or safer gambling, um, as some of the ones you've mentioned there, no doubt will be coming into that uh, as, the, as they uh, develop. Just below that, you will then see the regulatory research produced by Vixio. The Player Protection Outlook October 2024 is, is detailed here, as well as some of the previous ones, such as artificial intelligence you mentioned, yeah. as well as including some, some enforcements. Great. So if anyone does have any trouble finding that on their, their plans, then obviously they can get in touch with their account manager, uh, their representative at Vixio, who will be able to, to direct them. And those who don't have an account will be sharing the, the full report with them afterwards. Mm -hmm. So if we begin to take a few questions, uh, we've mentioned at the start that the chat box would be open and people would be able to ask either Tom or myself about some of the uh, some of the developments in the report or maybe just general questions around responsible gambling. Uh, so if we just pull that up now. Uh, so first one, is there any publicly available data to know how much is spent on tackling problem gambling? Um, I'm happy to, to give this one a go. And if, okay. I mean, obviously if there's anything else you'd, you'd add, then, then jump in. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no specific requirement for for operators to disclose how much they spend on tackling mm -hmm. RG. Um, it's something that a lot of the, the larger and some of the listed operators will typically tend to shout about if they're mm -hmm. investing a lot of money and investing heavily within within safer gambling tools. Um, you can often find information like that in maybe company reports or yeah. investment portfolios, um, just because obviously the, the benefits to, to ESG. I think I know that from a recent look in one that um, I think Flutter had invested 100 million or so mm -hmm. 
just in 2023 on, on their one of their, their safer strategy schemes. Um, hopefully that was helpful. I'm not sure if, if, if that covered your, your question. Uh, the next question asks whether RG training is compulsory for all staff or just PML or customer facing staff. Any, any insights? Yeah, yeah sure. I, I can, um, I can answer that one. So, um, I think the simple answer is it will, it will vary by jurisdiction. Um, with some jurisdictions, definitely there'll be there'll be training required. Others, it might not be expressly regulated. Um, but we have got um, content that can help um, people with that. Um, both the Responsible Gambling Overview tool has a section on um, responsible gambling training, um, pointing out you know where in legislation or regulations it's required and also our um our country reports the regulate uh, the responsible gambling section has has a has a um a, se a section on um on responsible gambling training as well yeah uh, thank you i think that's that's a good answer there and and i guess just to just to come off the back of that the training can take many forms and types whether that's uh by it, kind of internal training that's run by people within the business. Mm -hmm. People might use in-class training, people might do official certifications, mm -hmm. as well as there is options to um, use third-party training, and, and that's something where, where Vixio can help as well, mm -hmm. if anyone has any interest in, in that. Um, final question, uh, third question here. So, okay, I'll go to you, Tom. Does does player protection work? Does it make things better? Yeah, big question to 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 finish on, but I think an important question. I think uh, everyone would like to think that player protection um, and player protection initiatives do work and make things uh, better for players. But in reality, I think the only way to really know is to do a proper evaluation and measurement of any player protection uh, initiative or action an operator takes so they can really see the impact it's had. Uh, and also to, to check that there haven't been, you know, unintended consequences of, of, of what, they, um, of what they, uh, they're trying to do with, with player protection. So I think, um, I think the answer is, uh, yeah, you, you have to do good evaluation of what you're trying to do to see, to see how much it's worked. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a fair, fair answer. Okay, um, so we'll begin to, to wrap it up. Thank you for those questions. If there are any that are remaining or maybe come in, in during the final final few moments, then we'll endeavor to get back to those and, mm -hmm. and reach out to, to those people. Um, if you would like to know anything else about Vixio's Player Protection Outlook, you can you can do so by, by accessing our website, www.vixio.com. Uh, or if you're interested to discuss getting options and please contact your account managers or one of our one of our team. Uh, the full report will be sent out to those who have attended afterwards. Uh, we'll be in touch about that. Uh, and also your people can feel free to get in touch with Tom or I mm -hmm. uh, via LinkedIn if they have any questions or or any anything they would like to discuss. Uh, no more events for, for us this year in terms of conferences. Um, but I will say the next stop for us is the Vixio Global Regulatory Awards, uh, which will be held in London on the 4th of December. Mm -hmm. uh, so not long, not long until that now. Uh, just on the topic of discussion and with it being Safer Gambling Week, uh, I just wanted to highlight three, three awards which are going to celebrate the hard work that goes on behind the scenes, um, championing responsible gambling within our industry. Uh, in particular, these will recognise Responsible Gambling Service or Solution Provider of the Year, always hotly contested, uh, outstanding contribution to safer gambling, that's a, a company one. And then we've also got the individual uh, award for outstanding contribution to safer gambling. So mm -hmm. um, keen, to see, keen to see where those go. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for, for your insight today, Tom. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. And thank you to everybody else for, for joining. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.